Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my February TBR. That is every book that I'm wanting to read this month in February. I have a lot of fun vlogs planned. I have some Valentine stuff planned and I just have a lot of books that I'm excited to tell you guys about. But before we get into all of the books, let's go ahead and thank our sponsor of today's video, which is Ana Luisa. I have worked with Ana Luisa so, so many times and I absolutely love them as a brand. If you've never heard me talk about Ana Luisa before, it is all of this jewelry that I'm wearing right here. It came straight from Ana Luisa. They make really wonderful quality pieces that fit my style and I've kind of grown my style with Ana Luisa. I used to have a very different jewelry style and like small dainty pieces and now I'm all about like the big bold gold pieces so this necklace this pair of earrings which i'm literally obsessed with and this snake ring are all from Ana luisa they are so beautiful such great quality and my favorite thing about Ana luisa as a brand is that they are very very conscious about their impact on the planet so every single part from the packaging to the actual jewelry pieces it's all carbon neutral and they really make a concerted effort to care for our planet, which I love. This is also a sponsor that we have with international shipping. I know that's a comment that I tend to get a lot with people who don't ship outside the US. Good news, Ana Luisa ships internationally and every piece is just so gorgeous. Let me give you a close up of these earrings because I am so, so obsessed with them. And this necklace as well, just so simple, so high quality. And they are very affordable as well. They do have higher end pieces with like diamonds in them if you really are trying to gift for somebody special, but they also have pieces as low as like $39. And that is a really great price for the quality of these items. I just can never ever get over the quality of Ana Luisa. They are so great. And of course, I have a discount code for you as always. My discount code is just my name, Haley Hughes with the number 20. That's Haley Hughes 20 that you can use for 20% off at Ana Luisa. They also have a sale going right now for like you and your BFF for Valentine's or Galentine's Day. If you want to celebrate Galentine's and get you and your best friend something cute, maybe to match with, they have a buy one, get one 50% off sale. So all of that info and my link will be down in the description box. Thank you so, so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring yet another video. I love working with y'all. And now let's go ahead and get into my February TBR. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna start with my romance vlog first. I'm doing a romance vlog. Well, <laughs> I'm attempting a romance vlog in the month of February because it's Valentine's Day. Okay, I wanna be on theme. I wanna do the whole love thing, but I've also been in a massive romance slump for like nine months now. So we'll see if this can possibly pull me out of it, the books in this vlog, or it might just be a vlog full of DNFs and that'll be fun and chaotic and a little sad. <laughs> but either way, these are the books that I'm going to be attempting to read for Valentine's Day. The first one I have is Court of the Vampire Queen by Katie Robert. And I think if I get to any romance this month in that vlog, it will probably be this one because I've heard <laughs> that this is straight smut. And that's kind of what I'm down for. It's about this girl who is like sold to vampires. So she, escaping her father's control, is eternally torn between two worlds, the human world and the vampire world. She's half human and half vampire. But her father uses her as a pawn in his latest political move and gifts her, he doesn't even sell her, he just gives her, to a darkly powerful guy. He's a vampire and he's not to be trifled with. His name is Malachi Zeon. Okay, Slay. 
And uh, he opens her up to this whole new world, including to the love of Malachi's two closest friends and companions. So it's giving reverse harem and I'm obsessed. I also have a highly suspicious and unfairly cute Vitalia Hibbert. And this is one that I was really highly anticipating for 2023. So I'm hoping that I get to it and that I enjoy it. But this is like the polar opposite of the last book. This is why a cutesy romance friends to lovers who kind of lost touch because they were in different cliques in high school. But now they both are going on a nature retreat and like running into each other again, rekindling the flame. I also have Loathe to Love You by Ali Hazelwood. And this is just a bind up of three short romance stories that are like steminist novellas. I believe they're all like around a hundred something pages. But in this book, um, there are there's Under One Roof, Stuck With You, and Below Zero. Mara, Sadie, and Hannah are friends first, but always scientists. Though their fields of study take them to different corners of the world, they all agree on one universal truth. When it comes to love and science, opposites attract and rivals make you burn. So they're all like grumpy sunshine, enemies to lovers, cold vibes, romance with strong female scientist main characters. And the last book that I'm going to try to put in that vlog is The Rewind by Allison Wynn Scotch. And this one just sounds so fun to me. I haven't heard much about it, but when I read the synopsis, I was like, um, yeah, that's the one for me. It says two exes wake up together with wedding bands on with no idea how they got there. They have one New Year's Eve at the end of 1999 to figure it out in this big hearted and nostalgic rom-com from bestselling author Alison Wynn Scotch. They're college sweethearts who broke up before graduation and they vow to never speak to each other again. But 10 years later, on the eve of the new millennium, they're back together and we have to figure out how it happened. And I love that like time jump thing. I love that it's set in the early 2000s, late 90s. Like, oh, this is going to be so fun. I really hope that I'm able to be in a romance mood this month. We're going to have lots of vlogging in February because the next vlog that I have books for were actually voted on by my patrons. I do have a Patreon. It's always linked down below. You can join, but also no pressure. Everyone's financial situation is different. Not everyone enjoys the benefits of Patreon. Totally cool. Totally fine. But I do want to promote it because we have a fun time over there. So this month I gave my patrons four categories of books and three books in each category. And we had a little vote where they were voting what book in each category they wanted me to read. And then I'm filming a vlog for my top tier patrons this month with those featured books. And it's only ever going to be on that top tier of Patreon. So this is a vlog that's never going to see the light of day on YouTube. Of course, if you don't want to subscribe to the Patreon, like I said, that's fine. I will be talking about these books in my wrap up, but I know the vlogs are like a big draw. Y'all tend to like them. <laughs> if I do say so myself. I, I also enjoy making them. So that will be over there. But these were all chosen by my patrons. So thank you girlies very much. The first book that I have for that vlog is The Prom Queen by R.L. Stein, And this is a Fear Street book. We all know I've been really getting into Fear Street lately. And first of all, I'm living for the cover. It's kind of giving, I don't know, like Phantom of the Opera. It says, it's a spring night. There's soft moonlight. Five beautiful prom queen candidates, dancing couples at the shady side high prom. These should be the ingredients for romance, but stir in one brutal murder, then another, and another, and the recipe quickly turns to horror. Yes! Ah, oh, sounds so good. They also voted for The Family Game by Katherine Stedman. This is a book of the month thriller that came out a couple months ago. And it's kind of like a who done it, knives out, locked door mystery vibe. It says a rich eccentric family and a time honored tradition and a lethal game of survival. One woman is about to find out if she has what it takes to join her husband's family in a riveting must read thriller. Here are the rules. Listen carefully, do your research, trust no one and run for your life. Okay, so this is not giving knives out. You know what this sounds like? That movie, Ready or Not, this sounds exactly like that. So I'm hoping that I'm going to like this book as much as I liked the movie. I love rich people drama, so super excited. They did also choose a romance for me, so I'm really, 
I have a lot riding on me being in a romance mood this month, which obviously I have no control over, but hoping because they chose Book Lovers by Emily Henry for me to read in that vlog as well. I have loved every Emily Henry thing that I've read thus far, so I'm hoping that I'm going to love this one too. This is, as always, like academic rivals to lovers that I feel like is mostly what Emily Henry has done, or that's what she did with Beach Read at least. And they have to like go to this small town for different reasons and they meet up there and they like reconnect and they have this bookish meet cute both of them work in the publishing industry both of them are book lovers themselves so i love when authors pander to the audience that they know loves books by making their main characters book lovers like i'm a sucker for that and then the last book that will be in that patreon vlog which is probably the one i'm the most excited for is how to sell a haunted house by grady hendrix this one was so so highly anticipated for me i am so excited to get to it this haunted house thriller explores the way your past and your family can haunt you like nothing else so we're following a woman who found out that her parents died and she dreads going home to like clean out the house. She doesn't want to learn how to live without the two people who knew and loved her the best. Most of all though, she doesn't want to deal with her brother who never left their hometown and gets fired from one job after another and resents her success. But they need to clean up the house so they go and do it and along the way they're uncovering all of the like ghosts which are you know, ghosts, but they're also a metaphor for like family trauma. It sounds like something I'm really gonna love. And I've also heard that there's creepy doll content in here. So y'all know how I feel about dolls. And the last vlog that I have planned, I think I mentioned before in another video. So when I did my five star predictions video for 2023, I mentioned that I wanted to do a reading vlog kind of testing are they really five star books or did I predict totally off and totally wrong. So I'm going to be filming that vlog this month as well. In that video, I'm going to be reading Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. This is a short horror fantastical story collection about women, their bodies, and the violence against them. I've heard amazing, amazing things, so can't wait for that one. I also have Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is a YA thriller about a girl who is accused of killing a baby? Allegedly? And she survived for these years in jail before being dumped in a group home when she turned 18. So this is like a younger girl who was convicted of literally killing a baby allegedly. And before there wasn't really a point to setting the record straight and saying like, hey, I actually didn't commit this murder. But now she's got an unborn child to think about and the state is threatening to take away her baby. So she has to go back to the one person she mistrusts the most, which is her mom. So this is again, horror, high stakes, family trauma, recipe for me to enjoy a book basically. I also have Sweet Pea by CJ Scoose and this is a female serial killer POV thriller. The back just immediately sucked me in. That is the sole reason why I think it's going to be a five star. Like listen to this. The last person who called me Sweet Pea ended up dead. I haven't killed anyone for three years and I thought when it happened again I'd feel bad like an alcoholic taking a sip of whiskey. But no. Nothing. A blissful night's sleep. Didn't wake at all. And for once, no bad dreams either. In the morning, I feel balanced and almost sane. Doesn't this give Girl in 6E? If you know me, Girl in 6E by A.R. Torre is one of my most favorite series, most favorite books of all time. And I'm hoping this gives me similar vibes. It's like a revenge kind of thing. This girl has a kill list. I'm ready to just follow her as she is fucking it up. And the last book I have for that video is also a thriller. And that is Privacy by Nina Sadowski. I haven't heard anyone, anyone talk about this at all, but... The synopsis, again, just sounds like something that's perfect for me. It's about a therapist who notices that her patients are being targeted um, for like these horrible, heinous crimes. So she intervenes at one point and like saves one of her patients and she becomes this like international sensation. And then 
once she like has all this media attention, someone else is like picking off the rest of her patients, which to begin with is like, how are you finding that out? That's obviously supposed to be confidential. So there's someone coming for her and the people she cares about most, her patients. I'm gonna be very emotionally invested in this book because I am a therapist and I literally, all of my clients are my literal sweet baby angels. They're the sweetest people I've literally ever met in my life. And I would literally fight anyone for them. So if I was in this book, it'd be over for this killer. Over. The second anything happened, I'd be like, no. I forfeit my license. I'm done. I'm going to be a vigilante. And the way that this therapist is described on the back uh, cover, I think she's going to do something very similar. So we love, we just love following a woman who is not afraid to kill or seek revenge for what people do. Like that is the theme of all of these five star predictions. Hopefully at least one of them, but most of them, if not all, work out. So those are all the books that I have planned for like content purposes, but I also have a few books that I'm just interested in reading this month. So hopefully I'll be able to get to these. The first one is Yellow by Erin Beauregard, and this is an extreme horror book. Y'all know I have to satisfy my little taste for extreme horror. So, so sorry if you don't like this, but I'm going to be trying out this book this month. And if you saw my review of Son of the Slob, you're probably like, Haley, what the fuck? You did not like this author's work in the past. And okay, listen, I am willing to give anyone a second and third chance. Like I am still out here in the trenches reading John Mars books, which is the last thing I want to do with my life. So the curiosity may kill me with this one. I may be the little mirror mirror cat that dies um, because I'm so curious about this book. But Carly from Candy Apple Reads, which y'all should follow her on TikTok. I love her little TikTok reviews. I saw her on her Instagram story. She read this and she enjoyed it. And she said like, I can't tell if it's more fucked up that someone thought of this and wrote it or if it's more fucked up that I enjoyed it. And I'm like me like that sounds like me that sounds like something I would enjoy so I have previously enjoyed another book by this author The Slob there was a weird turn that it took at the end that made me lower my rating a little bit but then the sequel to that book was the one thing that I had a big issue with hopefully I can read this and it's going to be an enjoyable experience like The Slob except for the ending and then I can just forget that that sequel exists because that literally traumatized and not in a fun horror way, in like a, this person may have issues kind of way. <laughs> so giving them another chance, we'll see how it goes with Yellow. I believe this is some kind of revenge killing as well. It's a slasher, it's gonna have extreme, extreme, extreme gore and very triggering content, but you know, that's what I live for, so. Some of the best gore I've ever read was in The Slob, so I'm hoping this one can measure up to that, but without the weirdness. Like, why the weirdness? We do not have to take a weird turn. You know what I mean? Like, let's just keep it gory and fun. I have another extreme horror book that I want to get to in February, and that is called It's Me, Charlie by C.M. Guadraz. Guadraz? Gui... Gui... There. So this is an extreme horror teensy novella by a female author. We love, love, love to see it. Here she is. She's freaking beautiful. Hi, CM. Love you, girl. Well, I don't know if I love you yet. But when I read the synopsis, I was like, first of all, that's my worst nightmare, actually. <laughs> and second of all, my delusions popped out and they were like, did you inspire this book? Because let me just read it for you. I know everything about her. I've been her bookish bestie for over a year. I've read every book she ever published. The books that tell me every fantasy she has and exactly what she wants. She doesn't know who I am behind the screen, but I don't think she will care much once I show her I'm the perfect man for her. Women have rejected me in the past, but I've studied her so much, there's no way I could get it wrong this time. What happens when the person you thought was just an online friend turns out to be an obsessive monster, especially in a community like Bookstagram that feels so welcoming? What happens when your book bestie falls in love with you and will stop at nothing to show you how deep that love is? 
Charlie has been posing as a woman in the book community to gain the trust of a woman that he's been obsessing over. Can y'all imagine? Can y'all imagine? Can you imagine? I love y'all, okay? I talk to y'all in the comments. We be gabbing as if we're all friends. Can you imagine if one of y'all was like a creepy, obsessive stalker killer? <gasps> This is too real. This is too real. Ah, I literally am getting chills. I feel like this is gonna maybe actually scare me. I'm excited. And another extreme horror book. I know, I'm sorry, this is the last one on the TBR, so you can just go ahead and skip past it if you don't like hearing me talk about it, but I like these books, so. We have Full Brutal by Christopher Triana, which was so kindly sent to me by Justice. Thank you so much. We are following a cheerleader. She's like popular it girl perfection, but she's suicidal. She is not living the perfect life that everyone sees on the outside. And in order to pull herself out of suicidal thoughts, she's like, you know what I should do? Lose my virginity. And I can only say, I, I know that this is probably some kind of like campy commentary going on here, but only a man would literally ever think that something that might save a woman from killing herself is some good dick. like. Anyway, it says she does not want to do it the same way her peers do when she seduces one of her teachers hoping to ruin his life just for the fun of it. So she's destroying the lives of all these men and backstabbing is not enough. She's going into sabotage, violence, and even murder. I'm so ready. Again, I just love books like this where it's just like women like fucking shit up. So hopefully this female character is as well developed as the female character in Gone to See the River Man by Christopher Triana. If she is and it's a fun gory time, this might be a contender for best of the year. I mean, just on this and off as long, okay? I do have reservations because again, dick is not gonna save you from killing yourself if you're depressed. But anyway, it's on the list. I also picked up Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung recently, and this is just a fun little speculative horror story collection, teensy tiny stories. I don't know if I will read all the stories this month, but I want to like stagger them in uh, because I'm going to be filming a lot of vlogs and it feels like pressure sometimes. Like, oh my gosh, I have to read these books and I have to make it fun and I have to like film my life and I have to like have these books be enjoyable or else it's so annoying to just watch a girl complain about how she doesn't like books. Like that pressure sometimes makes me feel like anxious so I know it will be fun to have little fun horror stories to kind of break up the books in between the vlog um or like reading books in a vlog so I'm not feeling like pressure in my reading because that's not fun reading is supposed to be fun and it's my favorite thing to do so it should not feel like that so Cursed Bunny is on the TBR and I'm not anticipating that I'm gonna want to read any more romance but if I do I also have Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson and this I just think is perfect for me and perfect for Valentine's Day because it blends that like true crime thriller vibe with a love story. It's a like darkly comedic rom-com about this girl who's true crime obsessed and she's convinced that every guy is gonna be a serial killer. She's like looking for every red flags where there are none. She invents them in her mind. I am her, she is me, we are delusional girls. So she's into this guy, but she has fully convinced herself he is a serial killer. And this part on the back was literally so funny to me. It says, it's not long before she realizes he might be something much scarier than a killer. A genuinely nice guy who can pierce her armor and reach her vulnerable heart. So we'll see. I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. If I'm not in a romance mood and I can't force myself to read this shit, who knows what I'm gonna come back with in my wrap up. Who knows what videos y'all are gonna get in the month of February. But these are my plans. So I hope you enjoyed hearing about them. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. And thank you again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to go down below and check them out. Use my code for 20% off and shop the sale. And like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you don't miss any of these fun vlogs 
vlogs. And don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week. I will see you in my next one. Bye. Oh, no, no.